welcome to the session today's topic of the discussion is the transmission line parameters so you have to study the different parameters and derive the different parameters my name is ajit subhash suresh i am from the wit walchan institute of the technology solapur so what is the learning outcome of, uh, outcome of this today's session is the, at the end of the session student will able to derive the different parameters of the transmission line well to before proceed further you should have a basic knowledge of uh, solving the differential equation and uh, you should have a knowledge of uh, circuit analysis that is again it is a basic level and you should have a knowledge that knowledge of a lossy and lossless transmission line equation that i have covered in the previous session so reflection in the transmission line so what is meant by the reflection in the transmission line as we have studied that uh, there is a two component in the transmission line equation one is the transmitted component that is a normal component and other is the reflected components so the wave travel from the left to right it is uh, it is denoted by the minus sign here that is a plus sign here and wave travel from the opposite direction it is denoted by the minus sign so that is called as a reflected wave and thus the wave travel from the left to right is the transmitted waves and this red lines are again showing the uh, the transmission line and this is a generator uh, mostly in the case of the sinusoidal and this is a generator resistance which is a complex again and this is a load complex load is there and this is a line of length of uh, l and please note that here the reference is taken at the z is equal to 0 so reference is starting from the load side not from the generator side so this is your generator side and this is your load side so if it this point is at the, the reference as the wave traveling from the left to right uh, that is in the z direction so this will be the z, z is equal to 0 so it will be the zero point and this is the end of the transmission line it is at the z is equal to minus l because we are taking the z is equal to 0 at this point if you take the reference at the generator side z is equal to 0 this will become as z is equal to l so it is always there is a reflection is studied from the load side so that's why the load side is always taken as a, a reference please make note of that and again have a look at the equation of the transmission line and this is the voltage equation of the transmission line for lossless transmission line so there is no uh, alpha parameter is there alpha is the attenuation and beta is the phase constant here so here uh, as you can see this equation voltage as a function of the z so this is a v plus e raised to minus j beta z so which is traveling from the left to right and this is is the v minus e raised to plus j beta z traveling from the right to left so this is the voltage equation i have uh, the proof of the equation already derived in the previous sessions so this is the current equation and in the current equation this is z0 and uh, this is the characteristic impedance of the transmission line this is the characteristic impedance and the characteristic impedance is a real for a lossless transmission line again we are considering the lossless transmission line for the simplicity so this characteristic impedance lines is a complex in case of the lossy transmission line so this is the voltage and current equation input impedance at z is equal to minus l which can be given by the ratio of the voltage so this is a ratio of the voltage at uh, z is equal to minus l l and uh, ratio of the current uh, divided by the current at z is equal to minus l so as you can see this is a ratio of the uh, v at uh, z is equal to minus l and current i is equal to minus l so deriving this uh, at z is equal to minus l again this these are the equation after putting the z is equal to minus l is in this equation you will get this two equation here voltage and current and after dividing this two equation you will get the input impedance at the 
generator side so this is a input impedance at the generator side so this is a zn and this is a characteristics impedance and this is a phase factor as you can see this is a plus j beta phase factor phase uh, coefficient and here minus j beta uh, negative phase coefficient and here if you define a reflection coefficient so what is meant by the reflection coefficient it is a ratio of the reflected waves to the incident waves so v minus is the reflected waves and v plus is the incident waves so this ratio is uh, always a complex a complex number and at the generator side that is v is equal to l you will get this kind of the equation so this is a, a capital gamma l gamma l is equal to v minus divided by v plus so this is the reflection coefficient at the load that is z is equal to zero also the reflection coefficient that is at the z is equal to zero can be calculated by putting a z is equal to zero in this two equation i have once again i have, i will i will draw your attention towards this two equation if you put a z z is equal to zero you will get uh, the voltage at this particular instant that is at the load side so by putting z is equal to zero in this two equation uh, in the which will be the covered in the next slide so by putting z is equal to zero in this equation you will get this reflection coefficient so when the reflection coefficient is uh, again it is a complex number it is giving the phase and the magnitude part when it is a minus one that means it is a complete negative reflection that means the in, uh, incident and the reflected waves are 180 degree phase shifted and when there is a reflection coefficient is zero in that case there is a no reflection that is perfectly matched condition when reflection coefficient is one in that case you will get the complete positive reflection so again putting a z is equal to zero in that uh, voltage equation you will get uh, so in this uh, input impedance equation you will get this too so at z in at z is equal to zero is equal to uh, voltage at z is equal to zero and the current at z is equal to zero so you will get the z in at the z is equal to zero is there nothing but the load impedance so as you can see here the impedance looking at left from this side is the nothing but the load impedance okay when you put z is equal to zero you'll get uh, such kind of the equation v plus v minus v minus i divide by z zero and this is for the current and when you divide this two equation you will get the zl so where zl is equal to zl is equal to this uh, z0 one plus uh, that's uh, reflection coefficient and divided by one minus reflection coefficient after solving this equation for the reflection coefficient you will get uh, this kind of the equation that is zl minus z0 is equal divided by the zl plus z0 so putting this values in this input impedance equation in this equation you will get uh, this set of equation this two set of the equation as you can see here this is uh, zl minus uh, z0 z, uh, zl plus z0 this this kind of the equation you will get and after solving this equation by using euler's identity euler's identity is e raised to i theta cos theta i plus j sin theta and e raised to minus cos theta minus i theta cos theta plus minus i sin theta i sin theta so by using euler's identity this equation that is input impedance further simplified into this equation so this is uh, input impedance of the lossless transmission line once again i have, i will throw a light on this transmission line here this is the input impedance at from the generator side and this is the impedance at the load side which is nothing but the saddle so different cases you have to study uh, in the first cases when the length of the transmission line is the lambda by 2 that is half wavelength in that case you will get the input impedance is exactly equal to the load impedance so very interesting fact you can have for the half wavelength 
and it is also called as half wavelength transformer this kind of the transmission line is called as half wave transformer when length of the transmission line is uh, lambda by 4 that is also called as a quarter wave transformer in that case you will get the input impedance uh, characteristic impedance square divided by z0 as you can see this input input impedance is inversely proportional to the load impedance and what happens when the length of the transmission line is uh, integer multiple of the lambda by two, lambda by 2 so take a paper piece of paper and uh, calculate input impedance in this case when the input uh, when length of the transmission line, line is n into lambda by 2 so again there is this uh, reflection in the transmission line so case when zl is equal to 0 this is a perfectly matched condition there is a no reflection from the load and when load impedance is a purely imaginary that is purely reactive input is input impedance in that case also a reactive voltage standing wave ratio next in the voltage standing wave ratio is the ratio which is defined as the voltage maximum magnitude of the voltage maximum divided by magnitude of the voltage minimum when you solve for the voltage maximum and minima you will get something uh, the voltage standard uh, wave ratio is you will get this relation 1 plus uh, that is magnitude of the reflection coefficient and 1 divided by 1 minus magnitude of the reflection coefficient so this is a reflection coefficient for the wave and this is at the generator side and this is at the reflector side this is a load side as you can see this uh, voltage standing wave ratio is increases because voltage standing wave ratio is the ratio of the maximum divided by minimum so there there are three cases in which the it has a different uh, voltage standing wave ratio so third one have a highest voltage standing wave ratio so these are the reference